Welcome to the IPA Champions Cup, live on Sporty Stuff TV. Well, a very good evening and welcome to Sunday night at the pool. Sporty Stuff TV, Champions Cup, and we've got a good Sunday night ahead of us. Five absolute cracking live matches to look forward for this evening. Got with me my old mate, Mark Pickworth, the pundit. Pickers Picks, as he's known in the trade. How are you, Mark? How are we doing? Yeah, not yeah, too bad. Good. Just OK, I'm all right. You're all right, yeah? Yeah. Steady. You're playing tomorrow, so... Yes, I am, yeah. The queue's going to get dusted off. There's a few cobwebs on it at the moment. You might even be favourite tomorrow, are you? No, I doubt that. Well, I you doubt never that. know. You I never know, do you? Anyway, enough about tomorrow. What's, what we've got to look forward for tonight, our well, players? Tonight, we've got a former world champion, uh, the number two seed, Mark Farnsworth. He is a heavy favourite in the betting world. But he's going to be up in a very tricky custom in Rob Donkin. He's the former professional snooker player and he's going to be tricky. And, and we already know what he's done in the first match, which we're going to talk about very soon. Jason Rimmington, he got to the last 16 last year in this tournament. He had a great run and he upset a few bookies. He really did. And then the qualifier, Toby Bolt, one of the best amateur players in the country. He, this is a really tough group. It's like a group of death. Right, you spoke about our first match. You've got to tell the viewers what happened there in the first match. Well, we had the first match, Rob Donkin and Jason Remington, and it was a superb standard. It really was. And that dry break, what a time to get a dry break in that final frame. And Rob Donkin took it and won the match 4-2. Yeah, Rob superb. Donkin was winning 3-2 at the time and he's won the last match 4-2. Rob Donkin was 3-1 to one actually to win the group today, but all the money today has been for absolute fortunes for Mark Farnsworth. You see him here, he's 8-11 to 11 to win the group. One of our betting partners stood out and went even money. They went a maximum of about £100 a person to give everyone a bet. And they got smashed to pieces there at even money. Rob Donkin was three to one. Well, if you had a bit of three to one, that looks good value now, doesn't it? Yep. It Jason Remington, nine or two. Well, I suppose now it'd be about a ten to one chance after what happened in the first match. And Toby Bolt, the qualifier, six and a half to one. As big as eight to one, one of our commentators, Dan Davy, said. So if you fancy Toby Bolt, you could have got eight to one. But looking at there, but look at Mark Farnsworth, five to two, Mark Farnsworth is to win the actual event. And there's some big, big players, isn't there? Still left in it. But look at Mark's form coming up here. Donks. Oh, we've got to look at right here we go. Mark Donks with a bit of big ray. But look at the W's up there, Mark. Nine wins out of the last 10 matches. Unbelievable record. Number two ranking. He has been the number one for two years and he's lost that. He went as low as number 10 in the world, he really did. But he's come back, he's been winning titles for fun this season, and 84% in 2021. What a percentage that is. That is the best in this pro ranks, without a shadow. And, you know, when we looked at Liam Dunster, that was 72%, which we said that was incredible. But 84% is even more incredible. Big and 72% in his career. And awesome. And Jason, he played in the first match. I thought he played really well. I know he lost 4-2, but he done nothing wrong, did he? No, he didn't, and he, he was just unlucky. I think he's missed one ball, Jason. And I mean, that didn't cost him that frame, but what did cost him that frame was that dry break at the yeah, very, yeah. very end, and yeah. it really did cost him. And that, that's how cruel this game is. It really is. And we've got Rob Duncan, who we uh, see earlier for a minute. Rob Duncan there, Donks, ranking 18, but how he won that first match 4 2. You know, I don't know where them. L's come from. He's a very, very good player. Is he steady as a rock, isn't he? He certainly is. And that win lose record, yeah, seven wins, three losses. He's not played too much this season. Probably the last couple of seasons, he's got a lot of work commitments at the, at the moment. But 2021, 65% and 60% in his career. Them figures will go up next season. And it'll be interesting to see if he's going to be another one of these players that can break into the top 10. He's got a lot of ability. And we've already seen it in that first match. Yeah. Superb stuff. And and our outsider this evening, Toby Bolt. Well, you say outsider. You said he's a come from the amateur ranks, fearless, isn't he? Lightning. He, he is fearless. He really is. Great player. One of the best amateur players in the country, without a shadow. That win lose record: for only four wins, six losses, and fifty percent in two thousand twenty one, and sixty six percent in his career. Yes, it looks like he's a little bit out of form, but he got to the. You know, the last 32 last, uh, last year, and he, he you know, had quite a good run. He beat some top players. 
Yeah, he's eight to one to win the event tonight, uh, Dan Dawson said. And also, look at that draw he's got in the first round, first match out against Mark Farnsworth. So uh, we'll, see, we'll see how good Toby is, won't we, in that first match? Yeah, we will do. Um, Toby Boat's definitely got his work cut out. But he's played in this studio arena before, so he's used to it. And uh, also plays in the uh, TV table quite a bit as well. So he's no stranger to it. But look at that previous matches. Mark's 2-0 ahead. You know, he won that first one, 3-0 and 3-1. Both World Championship results. And, you know, Toby's got to do it all again. Mm. Looking at the, uh, the semi-final, the list that we've got coming up here, we could see the, you know, who's going to be there tonight? Who's going to be that Group E winner with a question mark? <laughs> Interesting, will not it? It will. And they're going to be alongside Gareth Hibbert, Ben Davis and possibly Curtis Lee. Remember, these two runners-up spots are still yet to be finalised. We've still got two groups to go. And all, who's going to be the final eight in, in Tuesday's and Wednesday's semi-finals? If you put Mark Farnsworth in that group, I know if, we he hasn't played a match yet, but if you put him in there, you imagine that top top four players there for Tuesday, it'd be unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, we're in, we're in for an incredible standard. I don't know who the bookies would make favourite. Well, that's their problem. That's not our problem, Gary, is it? We, we can just talk about it. We really can. Absolutely. And, um, but it, it's going to be, which, whoever gets through again tonight, they're going to be deserved winners getting through in this group. This is a group of death. There's plenty of value to add on the, uh, don't forget, there's plenty of value to add if you look for our partners. Just looking at our match odds here this evening. And uh, we've already had the first one there where Rob Donkin won at 11 or 10. Then we've got this match here, four to nine, Mark Farns with five to one, Toby Bolt. Then we've got Toby on again at five to two against Rob Donkin. Mark, Dun Mark Farns with again four to seven against Jace. And you've got Toby Bolt just over two to one against Jason, who's even money. And look at that last match this evening. Rob Donkin, 11 to four, just under three to one against Mark, against Mark Farns with there at eight to 11. So absolutely, you know, it's some five cracking matches tonight. But Mark's had a word with all the players uh, in, the, in the arena this evening and let's see what they think of their chances this evening. Mark, over to you. Thanks Gary, welcome to the playing wheel and this is the, the sort of place where we're going to just catch up with the players and our first player, Big Reg, Mark Farnsworth. Are you looking forward to this? Yeah, um, it's been a really good setup, you know, so I've enjoyed it, I'm looking forward to the tournament and playing. And you're one of the best players in the world. What keeps you hungry to keep winning titles? Um, I think the COVID's probably done me a bit of a favour because I, I, I sort of I lost a bit of hunger and uh, enjoyment out of the game, you know, and then not being able to play for so long sort of gives us a bit of hunger back, you know, and I've really enjoyed the competitiveness since the all the restrictions got lifted and the, the tournaments are being put back on again. And you've won pretty much everything in your career in Paul. You got to the last eight in this tournament last year but you haven't won this yet. What would it mean to win this event? Yeah, it's 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 a tough field, um, short race, you know, so you've got to be at it straight away, you know, so you need a little bit of fortune here and there as well, you know, but uh, every tournament's a, a good tournament to win, you know, so I'll be trying my best. And in this new brutal format, how are you going to sort of be consistent through this sort of very fast format? Yeah, you like I say, with a shot clock as well, you know, so a short race plus a shot clock, but that's what it appeals to the viewers as well, you know, so you've just got to try and hopefully you get enough chances when you do get your chances, you've got to try and make the most of it, you know, and try, just try and um, be as solid as possible in every match you play. Well, thanks, Mark. You're going to be on next, so I'm going to let you get ready for your match now, and uh, good luck. Thank you. Well, that's Mark Farnsworth. He's the favourite for tonight. Big Ray, he looks like he's, uh, he's really up for it. And there's our next player, Rob Donkin. What a great performance in that last match. Are you, are you really pleased with that? Yeah, really pleased, Mark. It's nice. I haven't played on the TV table for quite a while now, but um, yeah, no, play, table plays lovely and seems to play well. So hopefully I'll keep it up for the rest of the night. And you're no stranger to winning IPA titles. What's your ambitions for this year? Uh, exactly as you say, just try and win another title because, uh, yeah, I've won titles before, but it's been a while. So looking to add some more on the mental piece. And you wasn't in this event last year. You know, obviously you missed it, watched it on TV. How can you prepare for such a studio setting? It's it's hard. Like I say, I, I haven't um, played in like, on TV cameras for a while, and that, and you, you get out of the loop. But um, it's just nice if you, if you if if you don't enjoy playing in these in this situation, then there's no point playing. I don't think. But yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. Hopefully, uh, keep it up for the rest of the night. And you're a former professional snooker player. What makes you really interested in this sort of 2020 of Q Sports and our Blue Bays game? It's, 
I suppose the, the, the attacking side of the black ball rules, um, there's, as everyone knows, there's different variants of the game. Um, but this this is this is the one to to play if you if you're attack minded, you, it, it just means that from from any position you can win a frame really. It's very very rarely that you can't win a frame when you're at the table, and I just I, I love that idea, and that's why I try and take them out as much as I can. Well, well done on your first match. I'm going to let you get ready now. Thank I think you. you've got a bit of a rest in that now, haven't you? So uh, yeah. good luck. Cheers, mate. So that's Rob Donkin. Donks. He's had a great start already, but. He came up against Jason Rimington, who's up here next to Razor. Jason, what sort of went wrong in that last match? Um, Rob just played well. He took everything. Everything he went for, he got really played solid. Um, I played really well as as well, really. So it's a bit disappointing. Bit of a bit of swills, uh, bit of pill swallow. But this is our toughest game. As you play these guys, they're, they're good players. Do you know what I mean? This is this is what you're up against every match. So. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. That last, you know, that last frame where you had a dry break and you sort of just knew when you sat down what the outcome yeah. would be because Rob's a great player. Yeah, I knew, I knew, I knew um, as soon as the dry broke, I saw, saw it reds and yeah, Rob's a quality player. Like so, I knew, I knew they were gone. Um, it's just, it's a brutal game. Sometimes it's just, just got to take rough with smooth and. That's how it is. And you got to the last 16 last year, which isn't a too shabby result. Mm. How do you think that's sort of going to help you prepare for this tonight? Um, hopefully it's time in good stead. Um, just get used to playing these guys, I suppose, don't you? But um, it's just about concentrating your own game, I think, really. Once you you know, you start getting a few frames under belt, you start putting a bit of pressure on your opponent. And then, you know, you, you can win the matches and you just got to take one match at a time, one ball at a time, one frame at a time, and who knows where you're going to end up, so... And you're also no stranger to winning an IPA title. Does, does the Jason Rimington, because we've not seen the best of you over the last sort of few years, I'm not being too harsh there, because of your work commitments, etc. You're a great player. Do you think you're ever going to win a title again? Do you believe that? Um, yeah, I mean, you can never say never, but like I said, um, I think when, when I play on the table, I don't look at who I'm playing, I just play the balls and I know I can play well. And I know there's hopefully a chance that I'll win another decent tournament. So you just got to just got to stick with it. Just keep putting the practice in, and um, if I commit myself to it a little bit more, then who knows? Well, you're still in this tournament. You have still got two matches to yep. do, and uh, good luck for the rest of them. All right, cheers. Mate. So that's the razor, Jason Rimington. A little bit unlucky in that first match, but he's got to be pleased with performance. And uh, here's Toby Boat, our qualifier. Toby, what you you really looking forward to this match up against Mark Farnsworth? Yeah, it's always good to test yourself against a lot of the best players in the world. So, like, you just have to relish it. That you, that's what you're playing for, ultimately. And I said in the betting office, you got to the last 32 last year, and you played in this studio setting. How's that going to help you in tonight's match? Uh, it does help because you're used to it. But at the same time, I mean, if you play poor, you play sort of in hostile environments, quiet environments. So I, I don't really, I'm not too fussed either way where I play. And I stuck up for you in the betting office. You're one of the best amateur players in the country. You know, being in this group of death, does that sort of take a little bit of pressure off you being the outsider? No, I pressure myself if anything. Like, I just want to do myself justice. I don't really, I don't, don't mind who I play. I just want to do well for me. And last question, you know, you are the, the outsider, but we are still one of the best players. Do, are you looking at causing an upset tonight? Yeah, of course. I wouldn't, I wouldn't play. I wouldn't be here otherwise. No. Well, good luck for your first match. And uh, I'm going to let you get ready now. And uh, good luck. Cheers, mate. There you go, Toby Bolt, lightning bolt here. He looks like he's up for action. I think Mark Farns is going to have his work cut out. But we're going to take a break now. So have a look at your bets, see if there's any bets you can get on and join us in three minutes. Champions Cup Group E, match two. Best of six frames. First frame, Toby Bolt to break. Time running. It's Sporty Stuff TV's coverage of the 2022 Champions Cup. We're coming to you right in your living room. And it is our second match of this group. And it is a match that we have all been looking forward to see. Mark Farnsworth, the heavy favorite, while he's up against the outsider, Toby Bolt. Now, I'm coming to you from across the Atlantic and joining me to walk you through this match a lot closer to the action Near enough Reading, I guess. Dan Davey. Dan, are you there? I'm here, Jim. I'm here. And it uh, looks like Toby's arrived as well. What a break that was. Look at these yellows. Now, Dan, when you come into a match and you're uh, a big-time outsider, 
Do you want to face the favorite right out of the gate? Uh, you should want to. I think so, yeah. And Toby's got that sort of, you know, he, he, he's almost like a bit of arrogance about him that, you know, he just doesn't fear him, you know, and it, I, I love that about Toby. And when I say arrogance, it's, it's, it's not cocky at all. He's a very humble guy, but he does not fear Mark Franzoff. He doesn't fear Rob Donkin and he doesn't fear Jason Remington either. He knows that if he plays well, uh, he can get through this group. And the bookies, rightfully so, I understand why he's 81 outsider, but he is some player. He is professional standard. And uh, hopefully, he's about to show us all why. He's lost the cue ball there. Traveled a lot further than he needed to. Now yeah, he's got to be careful because that cue ball is going to be traveling ball. again. Yeah, he's coming down table to look at where his window would be, where his margin of error is. Um, sort of bottom left of the table to leave himself on this. I don't think he can hold the cue ball, so... It's whether or not he wants to leave it at the bottom of the table or whether he wants to risk playing at a bit more pace and get up towards that left middle pocket. Oh. Yeah, he's unsettled. He's probably still ruining the way he played that last shot because this should have been a lot easier. 10 seconds. Yeah, this is a big moment already in this match. Big moment. I think he's just about okay. He can just about get there. It's just a case of whether or not he can get as close to the black as he wanted to. Big shot. Big moment. Yeah, this is true. This one will test your nerve, won't it, Dan? Yes, yeah, an acute one into the middle pocket from distance. Across the table. This is tough. Yeah, it was never going to be easy. And he goes back to his chair. And Farnsworth, the big favorite, former world champion, as Toby looks on. What a missed opportunity that was. And he may pay the ultimate price. Yeah, it all stemmed from that positional shot when he had three yellows left. Just ran. Slightly too far with a cue ball and left himself unable to get close to the yellow, his last yellow, which then meant that he had to leave the black at distance. And this gives Mark Farns off a chance Ten to seconds. punish early doors. Extension call. Now, still got to settle in too, though. You know, the nerves are factoring in. First frame, they always do. Yeah, and he's called extension there. That That's not... I don't know if that's held up enough, is it? If he can't get through to this red on the top right corner pocket, he can just about get there from the looks of it. It's all going to be about this red on the left-hand side of the table and how he gets on that. He looks perfect now to be able to leave himself. He needs to leave himself dead straight on this red into the left middle pocket so he can top the white through and get as close to that left centre pocket as possible. Oh, he's looking very confident indeed. And he certainly wants to plant those seeds of doubt in long shot Toby Bolt's mind. And that's just exactly how you do it. Mark Farnsworth, come on down. This is your time. Frame. Swipe the break. Lightning Bolt's break goes awry. And it's Mark Farnsworth with the last shout. Takes the opening frame, one nil. And he'll break in frame number two. Strong start for him, Dan. Yeah, typical Mark Farnsworth. You make one mistake, you lose the frame. Uh, Toby, first chance, he's gonna be really annoyed with himself there. It was a really good opportunity to go one nil up after a good break. You know, the only thing 
really that looked like it could have gone wrong was that black was a little bit close to the side cushion and you just needed to get close to it. Break that two. really was the key to the frame. Mark and Farnsworth to break. He didn't do it. Leading one frame to nil. Played the ultimate price, really. Time running. And both Mark and Toby will have seen how well that Rob Duncan played his match against Jason Remington to start things off here on Sunday. Super high standard. Yeah, he was so good, Rob. Uh, if you get a, a chance to watch that match back on YouTube, he was amazing. 2-1 down, pulled out two very, very good clearances. Um, and then a, a, an easier uh, finish in the, in the third one, but basically did three um, three clearances in a row to Extension win the match 4-2 cool. from 2-1 down. But the way he did it, is, uh, yeah, you'd be happy if you had a bet on Rob. Put it that way, 3-1 or something, second favourite. It's a big price. Certainly. Time out. Oh, Mark spotted a little chalk or something on the cue ball or a run of one of the object balls. Pardon me, just asking to have our referee, Ben Taylor Fuente, clean it. Time running. It's amazing how things like that get in some players' eyes. I don't think I've ever asked for, a, for an object ball to be cleaned once. I, it just, I just don't see it. I just don't pick up on it. And others are just wired completely differently and pick up the tiniest little chalk mark on a ball. Well, these reds are all attainable and the way he's going to take them out, he's going to make this awful easy. And Toby Bolt is going to be staring a 2-0 deficit smack in the face. Yeah, and it will feel like a smack in the face as well because he's he's made a, a quite a bad mistake and should have gone 1-0 up in this match. And Mark Farnsworth broken in the next frame. And to be honest, he's left himself by Mark Farnsworth standards, uh, drop-ins. You know, this is as, about as easy as a clearance as you could wish for. And when you're playing as well as Mark has been Ten recently, seconds. you're sat in the chair of Toby Bolt and you're thinking these are gone 99 times out of 100. Well, just got to be a little careful now. He's got that yellow near the black, the top end of the table. That's the one he's got to clear to leave the black available. For two nothing. Frame. Well, this is why he is the favorite in this group. He is a machine. Mark Farnsworth, the IPA number two ranked player, off to a flyer here. Two nil. And he'll sit back, relax, and it'll be Toby Bolt at the table to break. Frame number three. Solid as a rock. You know, if I'm Toby now, you, you know, you've got, of course you want to win the next four frames, but two wins and a draw is going to get you through. So you're probably, if I'm Toby Bolt now, thinking let's just find a way to nick a frame point three. out of this, keep Toby myself Bolt's in the break. tournament. Training the last thing you want to be doing nil. is losing 4-0. Time running. Um, because even then, frame difference is going to be tough to qualify as one of those second place qualifiers. Big break for Toby already. Well, he won't get a better one than that. This is ideal. You want to get to the table and put a little oil in that back arm, loosen it up. There's no better way. I think if you were on the practice table, Dan, just looking to hit some balls and loosen up, this might be how you'd toss the balls on the table. Yeah, Toby's biggest uh, biggest worry here is complacency. These are fairly easy. Uh, needs to take these. He wants to take the three at the bottom of the table first, and then go up table for the other two. So, just all about how he 
gets on that second last red, really, the one closest to the left middle pocket. If he can get nicely on that, then uh, fully expect him to finish this frame off. He could actually play it now if he wanted to, but depends how he sees it. He's coming around to have a look at it. This is the tricky red. Not overly convinced, Jim, that this is the route you, you wanted to take them out originally, but extension I can see why he's just taking his extension as well, just to make sure he's uh, almost certain in his own mind how he wants to go about it. But he can, he can obviously get to the black from either of these two. Just that if, if the yellow between the black and the red in the bottom left corner wasn't there, this would be so much easier. For Toby, you could just drop this red in now and play a simple black into the right middle. So this isn't, the frame isn't quite done yet. Is that white? Just slithered by that yellow enough to leave this black available. Looks like it has. But his heart <laughs> skipped a beat there. That's millimeters away from, from being snookered behind that yellow. Frame. Huge frame though. Toby Bolt survives. 2-1 to Mark Farnsworth. But that was one that he needed. And again, if he's nervous, he's not showing it. said earlier Toby's a, he's such a good player he doesn't doesn't fear these top players if he's gonna miss he's gonna make mistakes like everybody does it won't be through lack of courage or lack of uh, bottle you know he's a he's a he's a ballsy player Toby Bolt so I think he's pretty well said as much pretty well said as much didn't he uh, Dan in his interview pre-match interview with Mark you know what? Talking He's not really fussed about it. He likes the he likes the environment that the TV table presents, and he relished the thought of getting out there to play. Here we yeah, go, I'll Farnsworth. Oh, Still two one in front, but he is holding serve right now, and he knows if he can just continue to win the frames that he's breaking, he'll get there. Yes, it's another break as well, Jim, where I thought, well, it's actually one of these where I think I'd fancy Mark to finish seconds. on reds or yellows. The extension call. Cool. There's, there's nothing that needs to be kind of broken out. There's no real problem areas. There's a little bit of traffic in the middle of the table. He's choosing to go red, so he's actually playing a plant first up here, which could well open things up for him. But it's not looking good for Toby Bolt. I think he tried to cannon into that yellow. He missed it. So he's lost the cue ball. And he's going to have to come with a big shot now. Yeah, very uncharacteristic from Mark Barnsworth. His uh, strength is probably his cue ball control. Ten seconds. Oh, that was a great recovery shot, wasn't it? Position was left a little to chance, but he's on a red. Yeah, if he can just about see enough of this red that's glued to the yellow at the top of the table, then it's not too bad for Mark, but he's making this a lot harder for himself than he Ten seconds. wanted to. Again, would have just liked that to have been off the side cushion because he can't really do an awful lot with a cue ball now. He's just going to have to drop this in and leave himself a 
awkward pot on his last red. And the, the black doesn't. I don't think the black goes into Same the bottom left corner pocket, so gonna have to be playing a tough positional shot. Black into the bottom right corner. It's tight if it does go into the bottom left. Big moments. Yeah. Just an outside chance for Same Toby, because still a lot of work to do here for Mark. Toby looks on. Well, it looks like Mark's looking at playing this black bottom right. So yeah, this is into a blind pocket and missable. Very missable. 10 seconds. Oh, right. what a shot. Throat of the pocket and what a clearance. From Mark Farnsworth, the former world champion, takes a 3-1 advantage. And that was a quality dish up there. A lot of players wouldn't have got out from there at all. Lost the cue ball a couple times, Dan, but in the end, he made a very good shot on the black right into the heart of the pocket. Yeah, that's what you see from these top, top players. I mean, when I say top, I'm talking elite, you know, not top 10, 15. You know, he's the elite, he's top two or three on the planet. And uh, the rare occasions they do fall out of position, five. Uh, they three. find a way. They Turning just seem to find a way to, 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 to get running. that finish. Well, it's a nice combination when you've got the shot making ability and the cue ball control that Mark Farnsworth displays. Because when that cue ball does go awry, he can pull himself out of the mud with a great shot. And now all to do for Toby. And it's not happening, not in this one. A dry break, one of the few we've seen. In the first match, the dry break was pivotal. We see a carbon copy here. Yeah, and a, and a, and a dry break, Jim. Look how many balls are in that top half of the table. Toby has absolutely crunched those. He has hit those probably better than, that's probably the best break we've seen all night in terms of the connection. Um, and how well he's hit them, but Lady Luck, it's not his friend. Mark has yet to put a foot wrong in this match. Done nothing to belie that favoritism that so many placed on him. He was less than even money to win the group. And when we saw what Rob Duncan was capable of, I'm thinking, well, the way that Rob played, wouldn't matter who sat in the chair opposite him, but this guy has a presence around the table, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Um, and that comes from winning event after event after event. You know, not just the World Championships, but, you know, he's, he's won over 10 events on the IPA Tour. Uh, he, uh, that says it all, really. He's a consistent, prolific winner. And um, these fine margins, this one mistake that Toby Bolts made in the match that Mark Farnsworth didn't. And there's your, there's your commentator's curse. Your first one of the evening, Jim. Yeah. Just slightly overcut that red, and in so doing, cue ball ran on just a little further than he would have liked. Extension called. Now he's having a look to see if he can make this off the yellow. Well, but he's got to be so that... close to that red, sat red cue ball. He's got so little. I mean, how? What's his room for air here? Uh, zero. I think he's. This is so tough. There's an argument to say you're better off just coming side fish and trying to trying to put it into the middle pocket. Oh, it's a whisker away. Well, he's left to ponder what might have been because I was already sharpening my pencil to mark a 4-1 score. But Toby out of his chair now. 
He is human, Jim. He does miss. I don't know maybe if Toby could have played the... I know he's up here for uh, and going to lay a, a difficult snooker for Mark to get out of. A bit of a delicate one, but he should be fine. But I don't know if this yellow in the right next to the black is going to come back to haunt him because it's the only one... When the balls Extension are in the ball. open, especially if he does get a foul out of Mark here, that should really cause him any problems. Maybe could have got rid of this yellow near the black before going up table to play a safety. Time will tell. You know, he really is he really is contemplating trying to be aggressive, isn't he? he took a lot of time over this. Look at that. Yeah, he just didn't want to play that delicate little snooker. They're horrible little shots to play, especially when you're so close to that object ball. There's such a small margin of error. He needed to hit the cushion after he flicked off the side of his yellow. And in the end, he's kind of tried to play it as a shot for nothing. He's missed it. But he has also left the red on as well. Difficult as it is, he's got a chance. Wow. Well, I, I'm quite sure that Mark had given this frame away. So getting back to the table was a bonus, but what a red. Frame and what a way to finish it. With he does one. take the 4-1, my sharpened pencil. Well, it was still handy. A 4-1 win. Mark Farnsworth over Toby Bolt and the bookies. Well, maybe they got it right. Gary, they could be saving their money tonight. Yeah, I think you're right there, Jim. I think that's why the bookies made him odds on. That's where all the money's gone for today, Jim. Everyone wanted to be on even money, 10 to 11, 4 to 5. But again now, if it would have went 3-2, and then Toby would have broken up in the extra... It, it, this pool, anything could happen, can't it, Mark? Yeah, can you? He's seen that. Let, um, it, you know, he's had a go there, hasn't he, Toby, in that last frame? And he's left that tough pot on for Mark. And Mark stands up to the challenge all day long. Oh. Pots that, it's a great... Great pot, and uh, Tony's been punished again, hasn't he? Really, man is still, wasn't he? Man is still there, Mark. He really was, yeah. And this is why he's the number two player, former world champion. Yeah. He's one of the best players on the planet. Yeah. And the next match, don't forget Toby. Toby stays on, doesn't he, for the next match now? Yeah, he does. He's up against Rob, and now Rob played the first match, but Rob's favourite. Rob's uh, odds on here five to six. Toby's five to two, and nine or four to tie. But after what I see there with Toby. I don't think there's a lot in this. I know Rob won the two points in the first match, didn't he? But this is no cakewalk here, is it, Mark? No, and it, you just saw then on that caption there, they've got a previous match, and Toby won that 6-3. Yeah, I think this could be anyway. So I'll tell you what we do. Give us three minutes, come back, have a look at the betting partner, see where the odds are. I don't think Rob Duncan represents odds on chance. I think this is closer than you think. Champions Cup, Group E, match three, best of six frames. First frame, Rob Duncan to break. Time running. So Toby Bolt stays at the table. Well, that's the good news. The bad news is it's a must win for him. And he's up against a man very much in form, Rob Duncan. The way that Duncan played in the opening match, superlative. Be hard to think that he can keep that level again, but you never know, Dan. Yeah, the the, the uh, disturbing news for Toby Bolt fans is even if Toby turns up and plays his absolute best, if Rob does that as well, he, he could lose this match too, because Rob was unbelievable in that first match, absolutely on top form. Ten seconds. Well, he's got a ball off the break. So he's got a chance to take control in this opening frame. And Rob has been in the practice room. He saw what Mark Farnsworth did to Toby. So I think he's not only looking for a win, but a one-sided win. Yeah, all important. Um, if you are going to win this and go into, say he goes into the final match, having played two and won two, if he can win this 4-0 or 4-1 and give himself a really good frame difference, then 
Uh, he'll know that a draw against Mark Farnsworth would be good enough to see him qualified, but he'll also probably have a really good chance of getting through if he does maybe just lose 4-2, depending on frame difference currently as things stand. So, really important game for Rob. But a good start. Slightly run out of position here, though. Mind you, yes. we saw that in the first frame, in the first match, sorry. And uh, he just kept on finding ways to to make the finish. He was absolutely unbelievable. Well, our first sign that he does in fact have a pulse because that is very rare indeed from what we've seen here on Sunday, a miss from Rob Duncan. And he had a chance. The Reds were in the open. So now that falls to Toby. Ten seconds. And amazing as well, Jim. So if Toby would have missed and left Rob that as an opportunity to snatch the frame, I think Rob knocks that in every single time. But because he just went out of position slightly and left himself a more difficult shot than he needed to, he was always more likely to miss that one. Well, Toby didn't play bad in his loss to Mark Farnsworth. He had a couple chances, but really it was Mark Farnsworth who seized control of the match and took it home. So Toby's got to try and stress the positives here. Live in the present because a win here over Rob Duncan keeps him on course. Yeah, look, two wins for Toby and he's still going to have a good chance of getting through. As, as a second place um, second place qualifier. He needs to win and he needs to win convincingly. All is not lost for Toby Bowl. That's nicely done. I think the fact that he relishes the opportunity to play these big guns, no intimidation, and you get that feeling too. Got a lot of self belief, a lot of confidence. Frame. And now he's got the opening frame. It's 1 0 Toby Bolt over Rob Duncan. Big frame it was. Duncan in with the first opportunity. It was Toby Bolt with the last laugh. These two are from a similar neck of the woods as well, Jim. So they'd have played each other a lot of times. I know in their sort of areas, a bit of a hotbed for Paul. Um, Rob's more sort of Essex, Basildon way. Toby more London. But there's a lot of big comps that they run regularly in and around that area. And they'd have, they'd have come across each other many, many times before. So there will certainly be no uneasiness here. Or will be very comfortable with each other. Toby Bolt to break. Leading one and, frame uh, Time running. Toby looking to kick on. Well, he swept the opener against Rob's break. So a good break here. I'll put him in good stead. Foul. Well, that was a big if. Cue ball straight into the corner pocket. That was a miss hit. One visit. Time running. Yeah, drive error. There's no, no luck involved there. No unlucky kissing off or bumped in off a side cushion or come off two cushions, split, spun in off. Just a bad hit. He's going to be really annoyed about that as well, especially after the way he won that first frame. Rob was in first, looked good, messed up. You just need to kind of put your foot on the throat of the opponent when they do mess up. He's going to be annoyed in his chair, Toby. It was a bad mistake. Well, Rob just flicked that one difficult ball out of the way just to clear the path for all the yellows. Yeah, it's hard to see what can go wrong here for, for Rob as well. Seems to be an obvious route as to what to take. Nothing needs to be manoeuvred or dislodged or broken out.
seems harsh to call a in off the break a mistake, but at this level it really is, and it makes such a big difference not getting first go, um, not getting first go at the table. So the the fine line at the top of the game between winning and losing, and uh, so often the breaks decide it. Luck is such a big factor here. The last thing you want to be doing is going straight off in the corner pocket. Well, even more concerning is if Rob goes on to clear up, he'll break in the next. So Toby's going to get to sit in his chair and ponder that bad break for a good deal of time. Do you think it's a good or a bad thing, Jim, that he's uh, come straight back out after his loss against Mark Farnsworth? Would you have preferred that or would you have preferred to have a break before coming back out? You know what? That's an interesting question. I mean, I, I can never see it as being a disadvantage when you get to stay at the table. I mean, you've got to feel like you've had a chance to let the nerves settle a bit. Frank. Yeah, Rob Duncan does complete the clearance and with it. Squares things up, 1-1. One, one. And Rob will break in frame number three. But back to your point, Dan, it's, um, I mean, you feel a lot better if you were staying at the table following a win, no question. But sometimes after a player doesn't feel like they gave a very good account of themselves, they might want to stay on right away and get right back at it, get that train back on track. I think you're right, Jim. I think if you do win and you're straight back on next match, you're going to feel a million dollars. But it's a tough one psychologically to stay out there <clears> after. Break. You didn't do an awful lot wrong, but you made a couple all. of mistakes. I'm running. Got punished. Knows he needs to win both now. Well, you know, know the downside. Kind of the downside for sure, too, Dan, is you know two quick matches and your turn can be done. So you look at the negative side of it, that certainly can play into his mind as well. But frame number three, and again, Rob's still breaking very well. Doesn't seem to hit them really hard, just times it so well. See that, it wasn't there. He isn't putting his, his body into it so much. It's just, it's just a really good connection. He's made three balls off the break, and he's in first again. Yeah, all reds. 10 seconds. Extension called. Just having a look to see if that one red possibly below the yellow passes. It looks like it does. Yeah, tough to get on. Um... I think there's a, there is an argument to say that maybe play the yellow that he's close to first. Much more difficult pot, but if he gets it, the one in the open. But when you can play shots like that, I can see exactly why he's done it. That was pinpoint. And instantly, he gets on that awkward red. And in so doing, he's just laid the foundation for a clearance here, Ten seconds. and one now that he'd be expected to get. Yeah, needs a good angle here, that's good. That's very good, straight is good. Now, the black doesn't go into the right middle pocket or the right corner pocket. So he's gonna need to leave himself an angle to play this last red and get back across to roughly where the white is now. Doesn't wanna be straight. Speed important here. Perfect. Well, I said that Toby was going to get spent some time in his chair. He did. Frame. He was one nil ahead. 
at one point. Now he finds himself 2-1 down, courtesy of Rob Duncan. It'll be Toby Bolt to break in frame four, but a good performance. Back-to-back -back winning frames. Duncan looks like he's back on song. Looks confident, doesn't he, Jim? Well, he's the player the bookies have bet on tonight because they've taken a lot of action on Mark Farnsworth, so they're sitting back, cheering for the man of the moment. Frame four. Toby Bolt to break. Trailing two frames to one. Must Time win running. frame for Toby Bolt. Can't afford to be going in off the break again like he did last time. It's almost last chance saloon already. Yeah, the pool gods, they don't forget. It's hit them well as well. Not the best break you're ever going to see, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. Uh, the reds are all clustered up. Difficult. If you can make this first yellow. Ten seconds. It's hard to see where it can go wrong, eh? I was having a quick look to see if the yellows are available to the same corner. He's got a choice of yellows. Yeah, I think the two that are next to each other at the bottom of the table, if he can Ten play seconds. the top one to the right corner pocket, after he plays this one, the uh, the other one's going to go to the left corner pocket, but just under hit that one a little bit. I think the first one will go as well, but I'm not quite sure he's got a full pocket. Losing the white ball a little bit. Ten seconds. Still on yellows, top left. And once again, off Toby's break, but has not been very kind to him. Hard seeing him fail here at all, Dan. He's gonna secure yeah, himself at least the draw. Yeah, just wants to be anything but straight. He's got a bit of angle. Probably ideally would have wanted a little bit more, but he's perfect here. Get that white just be below the sort of center of the table, up, up towards the left hand middle pocket. He's absolutely perfect. It's impressive from Rob. Doesn't look like missing when he's in the balls. It's been really good. Yeah, he's played one wayward shot. That's it. And he's almost through two matches. Frame. And it's a 3-1 lead now. As I said, he secures himself at worst a point. So right now, Toby Bolt in dire straits. One foot out of the tournament and the other one on a banana peel. And next to come, we're going to see the heavily favored Mark Farnsworth up against Jason Remington. Well, Jason didn't do much wrong in the opening match. He lost 4-2 to Rob Duncan, but Remington probably very anxious to get back at the table. And Mark Farnsworth, well, he looked like a robot when he was out there. A potting machine. Frame five. Rob Duncan to break. Leading three frames to one. Time running. I have a chance to put the ribbon on this one now. Rob, with a good break, meticulously places that cue ball.
Well, success, Dan, but not the best layout. Having said that, we saw this guy complete a finish from what I never would have thought he could finish. No, um, <laughs> sort of good Extension. news, bad news, really, for Rob. Extension. The, uh, he can comfortably play a plant red onto yellow in this top left corner pocket, but ideally he wants reds. Uh, the yellow's kind of a bit of a mess over this right hand side of the table. I'd love to have a red to go at, but could potentially try and play a skill shot first up, but it's, it's, it's tough. Uh, he, he sort of was half hoping that the red was going to follow that in as well to give himself both options. But as yellow as it is, and at least he's at the table. A lot of work to do here. Ten seconds. And even more work to do now. Time out. Total snooker. Time running. Snooker. Oh, himself. there you Damn, hear that's it. A disaster. Yeah. Ten seconds. It's not too bad from Rob there. He's just wanted to... So he hasn't left the red on into the right middle pocket for Toby. He's pushed the yellow that he's hit slightly closer to it. So he's just making life difficult for Toby. Keeping it's himself in the cool. frame. Already 3-1 down, though. Toby knows a draw is the best he can do. And that 4-1 loss at the hands of Mark Farnsworth, well, that looms large. Tough place to be, 3-1 down. Already lost your first match. Key to the frame coming up now, Jim. The yellow closest to the bottom right corner pocket. He's going to play that. And you can see where he's pointing his cue. He's going to be looking to bump into those two reds closest to the right middle pocket. And if this comes out good, he's slowly Ten seconds. carving himself an opportunity to win this frame. Was he trying to play that off the cushion and off the red and in to no, try and free the so. pocket for the black? No, I think he was playing it. He didn't have a full pocket. It was such a difficult shot. He didn't have a full pocket. He probably had half a pocket to play that into. Um, I mean, it was it was tough. But as we saw in the first match, he doesn't take a back step, Rob. So you know he's always going to go for it if he gets a chance. But that was tough. Well, the draw in matches has been extremely rare. No, it was something that I thought that would be on the cards many times. But if Toby completes the clearance here, and by all accounts he should, possibility of a draw. But if yeah, I'm not mistaken, it's robbed a break in the last, isn't it? I think so. And... Uh... 
he's no, gone well, right far enough as he, as he got there. No. I don't think he has. It almost looked like it was never going to get there. Time out. Not he's so angry with himself. Time running. I think the swerve's on, Jim, just about. This is tough. Ten seconds. Yeah, this is not going to be a performance that Toby's going to file into his memory banks, is it? No, he'll be wanting to put this to the back of his mind as quickly as possible. He'll probably want to go straight out of here and just get straight in his car and go back home as well. He knows he's out of the tournament now. Ten seconds. Um, it's a tough place to be out there. He hasn't done himself justice tonight. He is far better than this, Toby Bolt. He'll be back. He'll be back another day. Rob taking the slightly more difficult pot to give himself easier position. Doesn't want to be straight. He's fine. Such a good shot maker. Just played with a lot of control, and I, I can't wait. I cannot wait to see him against Mark Farnsworth last match up. There should be an awful lot riding on it as well. Been a really good performance again from Rob. Not quite as good as his perfect first match, but he's been brilliant too in this one. Frame and the match. Well, match what Mark Farnsworth did against Toby. It's a 4 1 win over Toby Bull. So, right now, Rob Duncan, he's the man in the driver's seat. But up next, it's going to be Farnsworth and Remington. Starting to heat up here, gentlemen. Yeah, the first three favourites of the night, Jim. I should imagine all the roll-ups in the shops will be going there and the credit offices there will be thinking, oh dear, it's Paul again. It's another night on the pool table. All the favourites are going to win, but he played well there, didn't he? He did. Yeah. Two out of two is uh, Rob Duncan. He really up for this. He wants to get into yeah. this semi-final stage and uh, what a great start from him. You said that last match, though, didn't you? You said to me earlier tonight before we come on air, you said, I think match six tonight is going to be the... I was going to be decide who's going to win it, and I think after well, Rob's got four now. If uh, if Mark can beat win his next match here, coming up against Jason Remington, then all of a sudden he's got four, and it's all on the last match, isn't it? Yeah, can Jason Remington put a spanner in the works here? He's, I mean, he's good enough to. It, it could happen, but Mark, I, I just think we're going down to that six match, like we've said, and it's going to be decided by that. Yeah, he's two to one on Mark Farns with Jason Remington four to one and five to two to draw. So uh, don't forget, look for your betting partners. There is plenty of value out there. There was value early. One of the firms went even money. Mark, didn't he, to win the, to win the group? So still out there, the value. So we'll be back in three minutes. So uh, we've got the favourite coming up next. And I think Gentleman Jim will be calling another jolly home. Champions Cup, Group E, match four. Best of six frames. First frame, Mark Farnsworth to break. Time running. Well, we had a situation in the preceding match where Toby Bolt was faced with a must-win situation. That very same situation now faces Jason Remington, and he's up against the man of the moment, Mark Farnsworth. So all to do, and there's no time like the present, Dan. No, you see, Mark's just got away with one there as well. He's, he's hit that pretty bad. Uh, the white's almost gone straight off that middle pocket, but Fortune's on his side today. Just about came off the knuckle, but he's been left with a tough, tough table. Ten seconds. Played so well in his first match against... Uh, Toby Bolt, clinical, vintage Mark Farnsworth. Ran out of position once in one of the frames, but 
recovered it really well. Yeah, and how about that one red that he knocked down the right-hand cushion when he was left a lifeline? What a shot that was. Yeah, yeah, it's just a sign of a great player. You know, they can do the simple stuff really, really well, but when that big shot needs nailing, comes up with the goods, he does it over and over again. So those big moments in the match, you know, that crucial shot. I say it a lot in tennis. You look at the stats, there seconds. didn't seem to be an awful lot that separates the two players, but it's the big points and the big moments in the games where the sort of uh, the very best come to the fore. Well, Mark had an anxious look to see if he can see that yellow in the middle of the table. Don't think he can. You see, he doesn't want to pop the yellow over the... Oh, wow. I'm not, not so sure he was playing that. He might have just raised his hand in apology there to Jason Remington, but didn't want to let go of control of this bottom left-hand corner pocket. It's a little bit of pull to be played in this frame. But black doesn't go mm. into the bottom right corner pocket either. Messy frame, messy table. Ten seconds. Gets into a bit of a tactical foray. You've got to feel a player that's ranked number two on the IPA Tour. Well, you should be able to handle that too. Yeah, clever shot from Mark there. Uh, he's just pushing this yellow down towards the bottom right-hand side of the table. He would have liked it to have gone a little bit further. And uh, when he does get opportunity, he could well be playing that yellow off of the red to free up that pocket to the black as well. So he's in control at the moment, Mark Farnsworth. Foul. One free shot, one visit, time running. And you see the foul, just trying to get that red away from a pocket owned by Mark Farnsworth. And will that foul prove costly? It should do. It's uh, 10 seconds. Extension called. A little bit tricky. You know, it's tricky when Mark Farnsworth's using his extension. Such a quick thinker. He's just figuring out now what he wants to do with his first shot. Does he want to get rid of this yellow in the bottom left hand corner of the table? If he does, then he's fully committed to going game. He is doing that. So it's just all going to be about where's this black going to go? Ten seconds. Still a long way home for Mark. Yeah, that's a, it's a big shot to play. Um, I mean, this yellow does snick into the middle pocket. Is he going to play seconds. that with deep screw and try and break the black out now? Get ahead of a shot if he can. He couldn't get into it enough. It hasn't quite gone to plan since Mark had his extracted his foul from Jason. With some effort. Yeah, he wasn't a million miles away, was he? And he's still, still that problem with the black exists. Yeah, and he's kind of played as a shot to nothing. It's a clever shot. You know, it, it was a difficult table. He's tried to play it cushion first off the red uh, to to Ten make way for the black to go into the bottom right corner pocket, but hasn't gone to plan. Jason's played a very good safety. Very nicely done.
and not easy to judge the cushions and the bed with a new cloth. So these escapes are a little trickier than they would normally be on your club table, but duly accomplished that one from Mark. He's played that well. Cliff Jason's is he iron up a three ball plot? Red onto black onto red. Right, he's looking a sharp shot. Very delicate one, this. Time if he's played that as he wanted to. Time running. And if there if there isn't a gap for Mark Farnsworth, then I'd probably say this is, this is a good is it you you may not think it at first glance, but I'd maybe say that Jason's favourite for this frame. If Mark can't get through to the yellow in the bottom left hand corner pocket, he's gonna have to play some kind of billiard shot. Or plant, or so he's going to have to take a big risk. And it's all right doing that when that's your only problem ball, but the black doesn't go into the bottom right corner pocket either. It's another very good shot from Jason. Total he's in safety. control. No, safety play has been otherworldly in this one. Mark keeps getting himself out of trouble, though, just to avoid the foul. Ten seconds. Jason trying to make a mess in the top right-hand side of the table. Made it like he's making diff life difficult for himself, but I'll be happy with that. He's slowly but surely becoming a slightly bigger favourite in this frame with every shot that he plays. Ten seconds. Still in the balance. Well, without a doubt, the longest frame that we've had here on Sunday. And no clear-cut finishes looming either. Ten seconds. Foul. One free shot, one visit, time running. Well, is that going to be the mistake? It cost Jason this frame. All he was trying to do was just bump that over the corner. Yeah, he wanted to come thin off of the side. Of it. He didn't want to disturb the red and the black that were together. And he was very awkward queuing as well. Time so running. you can see why he's done that. Um, doesn't seem to have looked away in disgust as if he's at a finger mark or he's at a roll seconds. off or anything like that. Just, just a bad shot. Very awkward queuing. Yeah, Mark trying to develop the black there with that. Trying to do an awful lot in one shot there. Hasn't quite got into it enough, so... <laughs> the problem that he seems to have had from the very start of the frame, he's still got now. Oh, it's that black. Where's it going to go? Ten seconds. Well, is he going to put all his eggs in one basket here and try and win the frame at this visit? He's going to have to find a pocket for that black. He hasn't got much choice, and uh, he's fully committed now, I think. I don't, I don't even think the, the, the double goes into Ten the right seconds. middle. I think the red's in the way. So he's just going to have to be trusted to luck a little bit here. One of those as well. If he catches the black first, full ball, quarter ball, half ball, probably one of those for me that's less than 50-50 for it to come out nice. 
you, you can hot, you can stick to the red afterwards. It's, this is tough. I mean, it, it's come out okay, but this is still difficult. Well, what a first frame this has been. Long black, top right. Frame. Oh, would you believe it? It thought about staying on the table. In the end, gravity took over. But what a moment. The final black in, Mark Farnsworth secures the opening frame, but not without a few beats of the heart. Wow. Did you ever see, Jim, the, the, the famous Tiger Woods putt where it looked like it, it was just about to stay up and then it dropped? I sure did, more times than I can remember. Yeah, that's one. You know, you look back at, at every tournament. Frame two. All the different Just shots that training one frame to nil. That have come up and uh, that might be one that you know might you might be replaying, you know, a couple weeks on if Farnsworth continues to progress. Yeah, big moment early doors. Well, he bought himself the shot on that black, so you've got to tip your hat to him. Now, what sort of reply can Jason Remington come up with? I don't think he could have asked for a better split. These are as easy as they come. He's got the two reds bottom of the table and then he can make his way up. I mean, I, I just can't see how he can go wrong here. I'm not trying to curse him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it seems I'm getting very good at recently. Yeah. We, we never are really, though, Dan. <laughs> it just happens. It just happens, but these could not have come out any nicer for Jason, and what a way to get back into the match. The only thing sometimes can go wrong here, Jim, is you, they break, they come out really nice, and you can take them for granted a little bit, and... Believe me, they are the most frustrating clearances to mess up. That the easy ones where you kind of just think, right, let's step it up a level here, you know, and you kind of quicken up a little bit. Um, so you just need to make sure you keep your focus. Take advantage of the fact that it's a nice and easy clearance, but don't take it for granted. Yeah, Jason doesn't strike me like the kind of player that uh, that takes a situation for granted. Pretty businesslike at the table. His facial expression rarely changes. No, he's a very measured player. Cool, calm, collected. He's a previous winner on the IPA Tour. He has won a professional event before, but it was a few years ago. He's got some pedigree. Frame. Well, it's a frame win, manufactured by a great break. And with it, Remington and Mark Farnsworth level one frame each. And the man they call, they Ray. Out of his chair to break frame number three. Do you know why they call him Big Ray, Jim? Well, I was going to ask you whether he had another nickname because I remember commentating on his match three. in on last on year's Champions Cup, and I'm pretty sure three. that his nickname wasn't Big Ray. It was, Jim. Um, and it was. to liken this to Ray Winston. <laughs> take, from, take from that what you will. I'm not sure it's, uh, I'm not sure it's the best looking like you're ever going to get, but... 
That's his nickname, and you can't pick your nicknames. That's what he's stuck with now. Good break as well again. Look at that. Look at that split. Yeah, what a way to reply to the terrific break we just saw from Jason Remington. Extension called. Well, big Ray it is. Just taking his extension, just figuring out whether he wants to go reds or yellows here. There's an argument for both. He wouldn't mind going reds if he could cure a red first up without being hampered queuing. So he is going yellows. Just got that yellow on the right hand side cushion. But looks like he's left himself the perfect angle, as all these top players do, to get into his bad ball early. Perfect. And always had that guarantee as well of the yellow over the bottom left corner pocket and the yellow into the opposite left middle pocket. It was guaranteed to be on one of those two balls. Frames open up. Nice Mark, Mark dabbled in uh, the snooker world as well, I understand, Dan. Yeah, more than dabbled. Um, you can look up some of his results. He uh, made it to the latest stages of the world qualifiers around 15 years ago. Bit of a strange player, Mark, um, in a way that he was always a very good player. I was actually chatting to him in the Isle of Man recently about this. He was always a top, top player. He used to play a lot of money games and, you know, the, the balls of steel kind of thing. He was had a few famous games for huge amounts of money um, back in the day. And... Uh, but never really fully dedicated himself to the tours and the pro ranks until he was in his sort of thirties, really. And since then, I mean, he's just gone from right. strength to strength. Uh, he is something else. When he gets in gear, he makes his game look ridiculously easy. Always the sign of a great player and a champion. Mark Farnsworth, 2-1 in front of Jason Remington. He said to be Jim that he'd never really dedicated himself to the tools, you know, to 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 the pro ranks and to um, the, the, the sort of season as you'd like and really sort of gave it a proper go. Everyone always knew what a great player he was, but I think it's really been these sort of last Jason 10 really years since break. he's joined the IPA Tour Training again two frames to one. that we've just found out, or, or even he has realised his full potential, which, to put it bluntly, is pretty much already an all-time great. Well, one of the last balls moving, found a pocket, thankfully for Jason Remington. Yeah, Finally, the red drops. Be... Yeah, and I think reds will be his colour. Uh, the yellow... Next to the red he's about to play now. Just doesn't go. Ten seconds. So reds are looking pretty good. Doesn't want to go behind the yellow now. It's just about okay. There's a good chance this for Jason to get back to two apiece. Such a fine line between winning and losing. I mean, when you get the break working for you, you're a formidable foe, especially in these short races. Yeah, I mean, these short races make it a bit of a lottery anyway. But um, Extension. Yeah, the, break, the break just becomes even more important than normal. But Jason's breaking really well. And, and he, he's quite interesting when he said in his interview before that he's somebody, he's a very humble guy, um, but he's somebody that really just does play the table. He doesn't play a player, doesn't get intimidated and overawed by who he's playing. If he makes a mistake, he'll make a mistake because he's human, not because of the pressure of playing a Mark Farnsworth. And um, I can vouch for that. Jason's been around a while now. Just run out of position slightly here, though. 
Well, Mark was right in line with that shot. And as soon as he struck the red, Mark was out of his chair. Was, so a was chance. Up the, uh... You look at the table, Jim, and you think, well, there is a problem. There is a hope for Jason Remington. It's the... Uh... The yellow top left of the table doesn't go into that pocket because it's covered by the red. But if Mark can get good position on the yellow, on the top cushion, he can play it off of the red and clear the way for that last yellow to go into the same pocket. Yeah, it may be happening sooner than later. Big shot right now. Big shot for Big Ray. Oh, that was a good call, Dan. Cleared the pocket for the yellow he's looking at now. And position to the one nearest the white will be the order of the day. He's not perfect either. Doesn't want to leave himself queuing on that left off that left hand side cushion. And he's short on that one as well. You see, he's just clenched his fist there. Really didn't like the way he queued that one. Frustrated with himself. So he's put himself under a bit of pressure here. He's put himself under a lot of pressure. Yeah, too much was asked, and I was a little surprised at the speed that he played that, Dan. I thought, if nothing else, he could try and roll it in, and he was still going to drop nicely onto the black, but he could have protected that pocket, covered it for Jason's red. Yeah, there's a bit of a saying isn't there, that players don't like to roll balls under pressure. I think that might have been a, an example of it there. Extension called. Looks like he can just get through to the edge of this yellow, but the hit doesn't really provide much. No, it's not often you see Mark take this long. Such a quick thinker. Ten seconds. But it's one of those where just a hit isn't really good enough. So we we'll see him go for the pot. That's that's quite good, really. I mean, he's still massive second favourite for this frame, but. At least he hasn't left Jason uh, a chance to clear these. And at least he's tied up the red, the red at the bottom of the table for Jason. But it kind of feels like it's only a matter Ten of time seconds. before Jason gets a good opportunity to win this frame. Has he left a double? Uh, he's just had a second look at it. He's just worried about the Ten double seconds. kiss. Very close. Not a bad result. No, it's kind of kept the pressure on Jason where that yellow is finished. very nicely played would love to be straight doesn't want to be screwing directly towards that right middle pocket if he's straight enough to cue 
back down to the bottom right hand side of the table. She is. Should be. Should be looking at going all square at two apiece here, Jim. Man, I think a just result, given the the play, the state of play. Well, Dan, you called this one right too. You said Jason was really in control in this frame. Frame. And it was control that he never ever relinquished. Two, two. So six frames are going to be played here in our fourth match on Sunday evening. Jason Remington, Mark Farnsworth. Jason giving a very good account of himself. The Razor, the number 36, number ranked, 36, sorry, ranked player on the IPA Tour up against the number two ranked player. Thank God the game isn't played on paper, eh, Jason? Yeah, I think the folks a kind of, uh, you know, a, a, a full showing of where he really has it, is at in the game Five. for Mark Jason, uh, a former winner Scores of a professional event. Um, just running. work commitments as many. He couldn't fully commit to all the events, so 36 might be on paper, but we all know he's much better than that, as he's showing today. Well, I didn't hear anything drop. No, nothing down. Oh. Well, so Mark. Well, we'll see how long he spends in his chair here. Yeah, just the only saving grace for Mark Ten is that seconds. there's problems Extension called. all over the table. Bottom left-hand corner for reds or yellows top right corner just where the cube is now whether you go reds or yellows if you opt for reds the red next to the black doesn't go it's a messy table every frame is like a puzzle that you need to figure out yeah brand new puzzle every frame no puzzle seems to be the same as the last one Well, that's taken care of one of the problems. Yeah, it's just decisions now for Jason. Does he does he play a more difficult yellow into the top left hand corner whilst Mark has got a couple of balls still tied up, Ten so we feel like he's got a bit of insurance. Yeah, I think this is the right thing to do. He's played it at pocket weight as well, so that if he does miss it. Oh, wow. So he's played it at pocket weight, and my God, did he need to play it at that weight because that wouldn't have dropped if he did that any harder. Still that problem. Yellow up to the top right. He's just had a quick glance at it. Yeah, I, I mean... For me, from the commentary box, it doesn't look as though it goes, but the angles that we get up here in the commentary box can be a little bit deceiving. Well, he tried to leave himself the angle on this yellow, and I don't think he's got there. No, I think he's a little bit too straight. If he can force an angle, he's got to be trying to cheat the pocket. Yeah, he was. And that is bad news in so many ways for Jason Remington. The red that was a problem, bottom right of the right corner of the table, now goes. And Mark Farnsworth's other problem is the red that's next to the yellow that Jason's just about to play. So in one shot, he is all of a sudden in a world of pain. He hasn't, has he? Oh, wow. 
Well, he got second prize, that's for sure. That so very near, the oh, very nearly fluked that yellow into the corner, but he's got a good goalkeeper up in the top left. Yeah, and uh, as much as it might look like he's got second prize, and he did, if he lands nicely, well, in fact, he's, he's playing the skill shot now, Mark. The only small issue there sometimes is if you catch that yellow full in the face, you can sometimes follow the white in as well. But unlikely, and Mark's played it well. A very confident player and a lot of courage. Yeah, you won't find him lacking in the courage department. Mark, probably one of the best pressure players I've ever seen. And that sort of reputation percolates around an arena, doesn't it? All the players know it. Yeah, when you've been haunting players for 10 years with the way that you play the big frames, it kind of takes its right. toll after a while. And assures himself of at least a point. 3-2, he leads Jason Remington. So a very good performance, that one from Mark, and he wasted little time in securing the win. Nice shot he played, though, early going. Taking that yellow away from the corner. Another look at it. And that was yeah, really that's, the that's decisive it. shot, wasn't it, Dan? Yeah, yeah. It was the key to winning the frame for him. Um, and like we see with these elite players, it's always that one shot at the crucial Final part of frame. a match that they need to get right Jason so often they do it. Trailing three frames to two. Time running. Well, if Jason can order a break, now is the time. Dig deep and see if you can give us a break like you showed us about halfway through this match. Well, he's made a ball. In seconds. Yeah, just looking at that red and yellow near near the left center. I don't know whether that red is available after he pockets this one. It is now. Yeah, what a shot that is. What a courageous shot from Jason Remington. Played it off the red to break it out. All legs in one basket. If that goes wrong, he's given Mark opportunity of these. Played that really well. Now, I think... I may well be stating the obvious, but this red on the right-hand side of the table is the key to the frame. I quite fancy him just leaving this as a double. If he could, maybe as his last ball. Or does he try and play an analogy? He could bring that cue ball back just to the right of where it is now. Play it into the top right corner pocket. If he fancies being a little bit more adventurous, he can land on it into the left middle. But I like just just landing low on this, and just backing yourself. Ten seconds. Backing yourself to get this into the top right corner pocket. No, he's gone for the left middle. Is he too close to it? Well, he might. No, he's just always looked outside. fit, hasn't he? He's always looked fit in this match, right from the outset. Like he couldn't wait to get out and play Mark Farnsworth. Big moment, big shot right here. I think it's there, Jim. What a shot that is. No kidding. Well, little that Mark could do, sit in his chair. 
He's got to tip his hat to Jason Remington. This has been some performance by him as right. well. Nice. What a timely break and finish there. The handshake, and it's a draw. A very rare thing indeed, 3-3. Three, three. But Mark Farnsworth, well, he's human. First draw for a long time there, Jim, wasn't it, <laughs> Mark? 3-3. Three, three. It's going to all be down on the last match tonight. What a cracker that's going to be, isn't it? Rob, yeah, it, Rob against Mark there. Whoever wins it, wins the group. Yeah, he, yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, Farnsworth, he's not quite at his best tonight. But Jason Remington, I said he was a tricky player. And we've just seen why. You know, you know, like for the semi-finals as well, on that last match, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be lovely if they both go through to the semi-finals being the highest runner-up? Could that happen, Mark? Oh, absolutely, it can. Yeah. What, it, what have they got to do in the last match to well, both go I mean, 3-3, three, three, um, so that means... Um, no, 3-3. Three, three, then. Yeah, so if, it's, it. if it's 3-3 three, three, or if, if Don Kim wins, he'll go straight through, obviously, as a group winner. Right. But Mark, he has to... to if he wins, that he'll be on five points. If he draws, he'll be on four points. And that he'll be able, just down to leg difference. Right. And conceding three against Jason isn't going to do him any good. Right, good match, isn't it? It is, it is a really good match, and it's going to be very interesting. And the next match, you know, Toby and uh, Jason, obviously, they're both going home now as good as, so they've just got to let, let it go, and it's just yeah. playing for a bit of pride. Yeah, play for a bit of pride. If you want to play for a bit of pride, we'll be back in three minutes. Champions Cup, Group E, match five. Best of six frames. First frame, Jason Remington to break. Time running. Jason Remington stays on after a formidable performance against Mark Farnsworth. A 3-3 draw, but a break and finish. Got him to that 3-3 conclusion. And now, Toby Bolt, neither player can progress, but... A lot of pride at stake. All about pride, Jim. These top players. Lay a marker down yeah. for the next time they play each other in a tournament. Get that psychological yeah, you... edge. You actually took the words out of my mouth. That's exactly what you play these matches Ten for. Seconds. You never know when you're going to be running into the guy, cool. the other guy again. So always nice to have one up on him. Yeah, you, you beat somebody 4-0 on the television. The next time you play them, you can bet your bottom dollar that that's on their mind. Certainly the table has been breaking a lot easier than we've seen in other nights. And these players, well, they've amped it up a few notches. We've seen a lot of breaks and finishes. A couple yeah, memorable and, uh, ones. Very much so. The first game of the night, Rob Donkin. Wow, the form he was in. I can't, cannot wait to see that final game of the night, him against uh, Mark Farnsworth. And a lot riding on it as well. You have to say as well, on, on the first two performances, Rob Donkin's been the better player of the two. Time out. Not a lot, not a lot in it at all. Time running. That's going to be a difficult one to try and call. It's going to be, those are the kind you just sit back and enjoy yourself. Yeah, and that's what it's Toby about. Bolt's going to be trying to do. Oh, well, that's not going to help his cause. He's not going to be enjoying that. Three shot, one visit, time running. Well, this one can get filed, Toby. It's experience, nevertheless. Really not happy, is he, Toby? You, you don't often get a lot of emotion from him either. But... Uh, Livid with himself in his chair, cursing his luck a little bit as well. I mean, he's he's cut the red in at, at some pace because he had to. And 
okay, you know, the, the white was going to be going all around the table, but this, it was a bit harsh for it to, for the middle pocket to take the cue ball going at that pace. Is you've got to feel for Toby a little bit. Ten seconds. Well, he's going to get another chance, though. Yeah, a lot sooner than he expected. And one good shot on the opening red. Yeah, you just get the feeling that quite possibly both players have left that sense of urgency in the dressing room. You know, it's a match, as we've already said, is more for pride and future reference than anything else. Yeah, what a shot that was. Yeah, that's come out perfect for Jason. Can either hold it and keep the cue ball on the back cushion, or he can take the white off of that back cushion over to the left-hand side of the table for this final yellow. Ten seconds. Uh, Jason Remington's going to open his account. Our fifth match of the evening. No way. Wow. <laughs> Anxious moments. Cue ball almost finding the gap between the Reds. But it is a 1 0 advantage. Jason Remington over Toby Bolt. Last year, finished in the top 16 in this event. I remember so his first night very well. Won two matches to get through. And he did a very, very good break and finish in the side of frame as well. So, you know, the one thing I think, I think he's shown it tonight as well. He's not overawed by the cameras and playing on the big stage. And if anything, Jason, kind of rises to the occasion. Yeah, that's what I was getting the feeling that both players knew that the match didn't really account for much in as much as this event is concerned, but still, they know they're on TV and they know their friends and family are watching. At least you'd like to think so. You would. 10 seconds. A lot of my friends told me they turned off after I lost my first two games of the group stage in the, the final bit of event one. That's support for you. <laughs> <laughs> we needed you in the com box more. Yeah. That's, that's what it was right there. Oh, of course. Of course. That's exactly what it was, Jim. I was just called. thinking about the next time I could get in here with you. Couldn't focus on my match. Now, oh, Toby with a good split. Just eyeing up the path that he wants that cue ball to take and removing these. Yeah, now after he plays this shot, the red just below the cue ball now is going to go into the same pocket. Whether he does it next shot or the one before is a different matter. But that's okay. That may look a little bit kamikaze. Sometimes you've got to trust the luck a little bit. But you can take the two at the top of the table now. And uh, I've just realised as I'm saying that the black actually now covers one of the reds um, into this bottom left-hand corner pocket. 
So, ten I think seconds. He, is he, has he left himself a gap? If he's left himself a gap, he can maybe screw into the yellow just below. Where, where's he going to play this one? I don't, I don't know. I'm a little bit lost there, Jim. I think you wanted the cue ball far further out than it's come. Yes, the, the red bottom half of the table only really goes to the right middle pocket. So it's going to have to thread that cue ball down the centre of the table, just to the left-hand side of the centre of the table. And we're going towards the black. It's all about touch and the pace. Yeah, the perfect line for the white, just didn't hit it. Yeah, just under hit it and cardinal sim really because if you over hit it slightly you could you can go into the bottom cushion and bounce back up a little bit so you always want to slightly over hit those if you can but but wow. definitely not under hit things just going from bad one to worse shot. for one visit toby Sorry, bolt you know in a lot of other groups, as well as Jason Remington has played in a lot of other groups. So the standard he's shown us could have gotten him through, but we knew how tough this one was gonna to be to survive. The quality of play, we've seen it. Yeah, he's a great player, Toby. He's, uh... His day will come again. But tonight has just not been his night, unfortunately. But he's far better than what he's shown tonight. Well, just slightly under hit. And again, we're talking about pace there. He can over hit that by some margin. Ten seconds. And he's still okay. Oh, he <laughs> raises his hand. Living on the edge. Well, he's, he's walking very gingerly around the table now. <laughs> you got five seconds um, from when the ball stops. For uh, If it drops after five seconds, it gets replaced. So he might have been counting that down in his mind, but... Well, Cubal's on a bungee rope at the moment, Jim. Yeah. The definition of ugly. Extension called. And you would have thought, with the foul, if he would have given us anything remotely close to the sort of form that he's given us in the first two matches he's played, We'd be racking the balls for the next frame. Yeah. He's, uh, he's played a clever shot there. Well, he's, he hasn't freaked it, has he? Wow. Still a very difficult long yellow. What a shot. Cued that one as well as he's cued any tonight. Well, the flute pivotal, and it's a 2 nothing advantage to Jason Remington. The Razor, he's looking sharp. You see this fluke again now, Jim, when it's not your night, it's just not your night for Toby Bolt. 
So he's tried to play this cushion first into the middle pocket. He's hit the knuckle and look at that. How's your luck? Well, three. just to remind everyone, still to come, leading two frames to it's nil. going to be Rob Duncan Tiny and running. Mark Farnsworth. That'll be the one to close things out here. And that will be a match that will decide everything. Jason winding it up. Frame three, already 2-0 ahead. A prelude to that final match. Yeah, a nice break from Jason. He's made a ball. He's got a good split. The uh, yellows are all queuing up over that left hand, right hand middle pocket, shall I say. It's just going to take a little bit of figuring out and how he's going to go about this. Does he, does he pick these off or does he play a cannon early doors to try and make things easier for himself? You always want to not, you always want to avoid playing any sort of cannons or nudges unless it's absolutely necessary. Ten seconds. And as messy and clustered as it may look, I think you can plot around these. You play a plant next. And the yellow into the top right corner pocket will release the other one into the right middle pocket. It's just about keeping your composure now. They're all there. Ten seconds. Didn't want that. Really didn't want that. Now, if he'd have been straight on this yellow closest to the centre of the table, if he'd have been straight on that into the top right corner pocket, Ten seconds. this would have been easy pickings from here. Yeah, and you can see what he was trying to play there. He was trying to flick that yellow into the cushion and back out again, but hasn't quite hit it hard enough. He's lost the cue ball. In a very difficult positional shot. He can get into this, and it's a tough one, but he can take it off two cushions. Try and play on this yellow into the right middle pocket. It was difficult. A tall ask. Toby was looking to just feather the cue ball up behind that red. Yeah, we saw that in one of his previous matches against Mark. And he, he opted against it and played the more aggressive shot, but Total a little bit easier than it was when he had a similar situation against Mark, and he's played it well. This is a tough one. That wall of reds. Has he got a gap between them? Foul. Yeah, didn't afford the angle, though. One visit. No, he needed to play that a little bit firmer to, to straighten the cue ball up. But the problem was, even if he'd made the pot, he was still in, still in trouble. Yeah, the yellow didn't go into the right corner pocket, so... Good chance now for Toby Bolt to open his account. Yeah, when you've struggled out, and never easy enough, not in a situation like this. As I've said, he knows that he's playing for nothing more than personal pride. And with a lot of these guys, they like to be under the gun. They like the pressure to be on. Because nothing makes you feel better than performing under pressure. Yeah, nothing builds confidence like that as well. So, World Championships just around the corner in uh, just over a week's time.
Let's run slightly out of position there as well. Looking to find the gap. I don't know if he's found it. Just about. Looks like he's playing this with lots of side to try and straighten the angle. Long black. Frame. Uh, well done, Toby Bold. Secures it and his first frame. 2 1 still to Jason Remington. But a good performance, that one. And the type that we expected to see more of and might well do in the future. 2 1. Jason over Toby. You've seen both of these players a lot, I assume, uh, you know, in events, and I know you'll probably run into Jason a little bit more on tour, but you speak so highly of Toby. I feel like you, uh, you're you very familiar with this man. Toby Bolt to break. Training it's weird you say that. I've actually shared a room with him a running. couple of times before. Um, so, yeah, we know each other pretty well, and... Um, yeah, I kind of, I kind of, probably I'm a little bit, I wouldn't say biased. I just know how good he is and the results he's had. Wow. He's, uh, he's beaten Liam Dunster in a couple of big events previously as well. One free shot. We all know how One good Liam it. Dunster is, Fine so move. he's no flash in the pan. He plays an awful lot as well. Does Toby. But like we wow. said before, Jason is a, is a, Professional event winner around five, six years ago. Forgive me on the, the exact dates, but he is a professional event winner. You can't fluke those, Jim. You know, you have to win five, six matches to win those. He's just been away from the game a little bit this last season or two due to work commitments, but he is some player. Well, he's definitely given us glimpses of what he is capable of. Of that, there's no doubt. I mean... Most notably, just the match preceding this one. You know, the 3-3 three, three, three draw with Mark Farnsworth. And Farnsworth, one of the event favorites. So, he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best of them. Ten seconds. Yeah, and he and also... He does strike... he also... Carry on, Jim. No, I was going to say, he strikes me like the type of person, too, that does not get intimidated by any of them. No, exactly that. You took the words out of my mouth. He... Um... I really like his body language, you know, when he plays anybody, but especially you play Mark Farnsworth, the arguably, you know, first or second best player on the planet right now. And like he said, look, I just play the balls. You know, he's not intimidated by people. And he's just got this positive body language about him where, you know, he's sort of puffs his chest out a little bit, stands up right, quite stone faced, doesn't really show too much emotion, whether he plays a good or a bad shot which can be quite intimidating in its own right. Frame. He wasted little time in securing his third frame. Remington back to in front, secures at least another draw. 3-1 ahead of Toby Bolt. But that was impressive, the break and finish. And he'll sit back, relax, and if Toby can come up with a break. Yeah, and he hasn't broken very well tonight, Toby. He's gone straight enough into the corner pocket once to do remember. And uh, hasn't been, hasn't broken like he can. And as break we know, also Jason well, to break. Leading three if your break's not one. anywhere near its best, you can... You're going to be struggling against these top players. Oh, pardon me, that was Toby that broke in the last and the foul that brought Jason to the table. So Jason with a chance to close this one out. And a successful breakdown, and yeah, 
know, he looks back to his match against Rob Duncan, the very first match here on Sunday and four, two, he ended up losing to Rob, but Rob was in unbelievable form. Jason really didn't do much wrong. And had he not, not caught Rob in, in, in that type of mindset, well, what could have been for this guy? Yeah, definitely. He, uh, he was two one up against Rob and in a, in what looks like it was heading to be a bit of a messy tactical frame. Rob's just pulled a finish out of absolutely nowhere. A clearance, which to be honest, 90% of the professionals out there wouldn't have even been going for in the first place. And he's then cleared off the break and, uh, and, and extension cool. and, uh, cleared off the last one as well I think he was just just in top form sometimes you just got to hold your hands up and just sell it you know I haven't played that bad tonight my form's pretty good but it wasn't my night tonight well that one's gone astray So Toby to force a sixth frame in this match. Ten, Gonna ten. show something. Yeah, quick look at tomorrow's state of play as well. Get we had to see our buddy Mark Pickworth out there. Well, Mark's done everything from the studio pundit to he's done some commentary. He's gone out, done some interviews. He'll be playing tomorrow. I think we should mic him up and get him to do everything while he's out there playing. Probably try and get yeah. a round of golfing in the morning too. Yeah, give us all the night off. We can do the lot. Un I, told him, I told him I'm going to buy him a Fitbit. I want to know how many <laughs> steps he puts in in a day. Well, he want to be putting his uh, he want to be putting his steps in while he's uh, at the table tomorrow night. Doesn't want to be sat down in his chair like he's been for the last God, few months now. Just sat there taking it easy. He's out there in the spotlight tomorrow. Ten seconds. No, he's already he's already told me, Dan. He's getting his pants pressed. He doesn't plan to spend any time in that chair. <laughs> the last time he played, to be fair, on TV, he um. He played a really good match. He beat a guy called Adam Basu, top amateur. Um, went 5-0 up on him. I think he ended up winning 6-2 or 6-3, but it was really good, to be fair. So he'll be quietly confident. Probably be a nice Ten seconds. release for him uh, to get out there playing, as opposed to all his punditry work. And he's sporting a little bit of a cold as well. It feels a little bit under the weather, so... Thought I detected a little bit of rasp in his voice too, so he's gonna have to get a good sleep tonight. We'll have to try and get him out of here early. Ten seconds. Well, back to the man in focus right now. Just a little short of ideal position on that red that he intended to the right center. He's gonna have to come with a pretty good shot now into a blind pocket. Oh, what an effort. That's got to be considered pretty unlucky. Knocks that red in. Cue ball around. Does everything except dislodge the other one. Deserved a better fate. Yeah, he really did. Now, he's looking at playing the red off of the yellow into the right-hand side Ten cushion. Seconds. And then into the opposite corner pocket. This will be shot of the tournament if he pulls this off, Jim. No that way. one you mean? Was oh, that the one word. you were talking about? It might have been, Jim. It might have been. Well, I'll mark that one down. Definitely worth another look. Exactly as you outlined it, Dan. And well, what I, a shot. I'm going to have to correct myself. He's actually played it off the red. 
um, directly off the red at such pace. What a shot that was. It's one of the Unbelievable match. finish to that one from Jason Remington. A 4-1 win over Toby Bolt with an exclamation point. Tremendous shot. Yeah, well, that one's one. certainly worth another look, isn't it? Yeah, he initially looked at playing it thick off the yellow um, and off the side cushion and back across the table. He ended up just playing it directly and off as a billiard. He played it at, at pace. What a shot that is. That's, that's, that's up there shot of the tournament, Jim. Well, we'll let the guys talk about that shot for sure. The best shot we've seen. Gentlemen. That was a good shot, Dave. Yeah, uh, Jim, unbelievable. Dave, can we see that shot again? Because it was just, weren't it, Mark? I've never seen anything like that. No, it was. That was just unbelievable. Look at this. Incredible. And you know what made it better? Dan, Dan Dave, he called it before, didn't he? He said to Jim, Jim works in. He said, well, he, that's what a shot he's going to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. And uh, I mean, you won't probably, I mean, it's probably a one out of ten shot. You've got to do that tomorrow when you play, you oh. know that, don't you? You've got to do a few of them tomorrow. We'll have you go and we play tomorrow night as well. But it was a good game, wasn't it? Really? Very good game. And he played uh, well, wasn't he? Jason has, yeah, and uh, as expected. I really, yeah. I really thought. Jason, we're better talking about the last match, isn't it? What we, what we, what we can't talk about anything else here, can we? So uh, look for the value if you want to bet odds on. Just looking at my price here, Mark Farns were four to six to win this last match against Rob Donkin. He shouldn't be four to six, should he? Not really. It's got to be odds against, isn't yeah. it? It's five to six in a place. It's four to five. It's too short. This will be a good last match. Well, three yeah. minutes time, we know we know we get we get this going, won't we? Eh? With that referee and the referee done well tonight as well, and he Ben Taylor for that. He ain't made a wreck again, has he? There's three minutes, boys and girls, and we're going to come back for the finale of the night. Who's going to win it? I don't know. Champions Cup. Final match of Group E. Best of six frames. First frame. Rob Donkin to break. Time running. Well, settle back, relax, and enjoy our final match of the evening. And it's the one we've all been waiting for. And what a prospect. Two very much informed players for the group title and to move on. And even the, the loser in this, you know, a chance that he might well be there as well because neither one of these players have tasted defeat yet tonight. Thank you. No, we've just been doing some sums, Jim, during the break. And uh, a draw or 4-2 for Mark puts both players through because Mark with a draw would be on four points with a plus three frame difference, making him the second well, the, the best placed uh, second place finisher, as uh, as easy as that is for me to say, and um, a four one would put Rob level with Ross Fernie, and very likely to go through as well, depending on tomorrow night. So, um, a little bit too much to think about probably for the players in the in the uh, in the dressing room. Just yeah, well, they have done the, the match. math just like you, Dan. Yeah. I think we're yet to see a player with a couple of draws make it through, but there's always a possibility. But Rob Donkin well, certainly. Sort of, uh... Sorry, Jim. No, I was going to say certainly Rob, the run one right now, who looks to take command in early going. And in a match that could well prove to be the toss of a coin, you've got to take your chances. And that goes without saying. Yeah, and he just looks in such control of, of what he's doing at the moment, Rob Donkin. It's been great to watch tonight. It's been really, really good. Ten seconds. And now even to just take one step further ahead. You now the winner here. Goes into the group with Gareth Hibbett and Ben Davies and a top finisher. And I mean, try and pick a winner in that group. 
Good luck. Yeah, almost impossible. But Rob Donkin there, he's just under hit that one by a good few inches. And well, that's a that really careless that. mistake there because if he over, I mean, his margin of error, he can hit that a foot firmer than he did. And he'd still be okay. He'd still be on both a choice of reds, but I don't know if he thinks he got an awkward bounce off that bottom cushion or just under hit it, but he's in recovery mode. Well, can he get through to this bottom red? It's close. Well, I don't think he's snookered on it, but it's whether or not he needs to bend it a little bit, which is so much more difficult to do when there's such distance between the balls, and he is having to do that. He's playing the swerve. Seconds. He actually caught it too thick, so he's just marginally over-swerved the cue ball and, uh, and sat in the wrong chair as well. <laughs> well it's well. all happening for Rob. <laughs> No, and this uh, this reminds me of that first. This reminds me of that first match against Toby Bolt, where Mark looked for all the world like he was going to go one nil down. Just that one slack positional shot from Toby um, cost him the frame, and Mark ended up winning a four, winning four one in the end. Uh, that one bad positional shot, I think, is going to cost Rob this frame. At this level, you've got to take your chances. Yeah, just doesn't want to be straight on this yellow. It's just about perfect there. Just wants to be tracking that cue ball down the center of the table. Do them nicely. And against Mark Farnsworth, mistakes are almost always punished. And he doesn't take a lot of time doing it, so the suffering doesn't last long. Frame. And one nil. Just like that. That positional shot from Rob Duncan and Costly, Mark Farnsworth, 1-0 in front. It's amazing how many times you see top, top players just make that one extra mistake against the Mark Farnsworth, Liam Dunster or John McAllister. And you've got your two or three elite players or whoever's, whoever's the best at the time. They always seem to have people make just that one extra mistake against them that they seem to make against everybody else. Well, that's frame the two. reputation. Mark Farnsworth to Part and parcel. Leading one frame to nil. No, they build it over years. And they carry that presence into the arena. Uh, look at the yellows. I mean, Jim, in fairness, at, reds aren't reds. bad either. <laughs> well, <laughs> and it looked for all the world like it was going to be a dry break, but two yellows dropped with what seemed like the very last rolls. And actually, it wasn't really that nice a break for Mark Farnsworth. He almost went straight and off into the right middle pocket, but he's got away with it. We saw him do that earlier as well. Straight into the knuckle of the middle pocket. He won't be happy with the break. Well, how he's hit the break. But he'll be happy with the result. Well, he'd like to leave one of those two yellows on the right-hand side for the final yellow because it offers good position to the black that does pass to the bottom left and to the left center. So we'll see how he goes about his work here. Yeah, you've played this game before, Jim. Well, never really exactly played this what? game before. But that wasn't a very good effort from him, was it? No, he wanted to get as close as he possibly could um, to, to, to that yellow. So he did have to run very tight to the line of the red. But he's just not quite got into it enough. So 
10 seconds. He's in trouble now. How thin was that car? And even then, it only just went Total in. Total snooker. Well, he's given the chance right back to Rob in the same manner. This one, it looked like it was going to be a formality for him, just getting the cue ball into the middle. Just one lax effort with the white. Very similar to what Rob showed us in the first frame. Well, after the break, Jim, we were sat here sort of almost chalking the frame up for Mark, weren't we? I certainly was. Beauty here for Rob as well is the uh, the red that looks like it's a problem on this right-hand side cushion. He can plant that onto the other red over the pocket. It's unmissable. So you were saying... Dan, that a draw here, good chance it sees them both through? A draw does see them both through. Uh, and a 4-2 win for Mark Farnsworth sees them both through as well. So two, the magic number for Rob Duncan right now. Indeed. He needs to be a little bit careful about when he plays the red into the bottom right corner pocket as to not seconds. to flick the yellow. Extension over control. on the left hand side of the table on the way back up. And he's taken his extension now. He's just having an extra study of the table, figuring out which ball do I take first? Which ball am I going to leave to my last? I like the way he's gone here. This is pretty good, Jim. So he can just stun the cue ball now. Red into the bottom right corner pocket and then bring the white back up towards this left middle pocket area. And play the black into the same pocket as this red. Yeah, much better performance and a timely one. Frame. And 1-1 one, one is your score. So both players, they've had their turns at the table, both of them. In frames, it looked like they were going to win. They lost. Yeah, as good as they've both been tonight, they're both human. Maybe they're both feeling it out there a little bit. The pressure on this. Mark needs to get to three. Rob needs to get to two. It's all going on out there. Frame three. Rob Donkin to break. Scores are tied. Oh, Rob three. is out of his chair. Time running. A valuable frame awaits him right now. Void break. Uh, it's going to be a re rack. Black into the same pocket as the red. Yeah, and before we saw our referee swipe the balls back into their positions to rack them up again, what looked like there was going to be quite an easy clearance on yellows for Rob. And you always think the pool gods are going to. It's quite a common saying amongst the players. You watch now. I'll go dry after this. Always seems to be the way. Well, the table has broken much, much more sympathetic than it has in prior matches, for sure. Rob prior evenings. No penalty. Time running. 
Yeah, I think you always get that a little bit as well when the cloth's at its freshest. I only not had that many frames on it since it's been re-cloth this table. Uh, it's not nearly as inviting a table as what it was earlier. Had the black no. not gone in. No, and it, it kind of looked like it was going to be, but the last few balls just kind of all seemed to cluster up. And uh, there's no yellow for Ten Rob seconds. to go at. No obvious yellow for Rob to go at. He's got an easy red into the right middle pocket, but there's problems everywhere you look for him. Uh, he tried to develop everything in one visit and he accomplished nothing. No, but at least he's still got five reds left on the table. You always want to go into your bad balls early because if it doesn't come out nice, you can always resort to plan B, whatever that might be. Ten seconds. Luckily for Rob, the black has tied itself up as well, so... What's an issue for Rob is also an issue for Mark. Yeah, we see Rob right now. The tactical side of this game, probably not really something that he wants to try and force. 10 seconds. Not the way that he plays. No, it is you, you, you're bang on, Jim. It's not his natural game, uh, like like all of us. He'll, he'll do it if he has to, but he doesn't want to. Um, he wants to attack, as we've already seen tonight. But I think even Rob Donkin's not going to be attacking from here. Ten seconds. Extension. Former snooker player, like you mentioned. Good friends with uh, Stuart Bingham is Rob Donkin. Grew up together. Played a lot of the junior snooker tournaments together. Uh, Stuart Bingham, I wonder if he's going to enjoy the same type of career because it seems like Bingham was like a fine wine. Seconds. As he aged, he got better. Yeah, you're right, actually. A little bit of a journeyman pro, wasn't he, until uh, until the, uh, the amount of events seemed to be ramped up in the snooker world. Got better into his late 30s and early 40s. This is turning into a game of chess. You see Mark's just trying to force Rob to play this red nearer, nearest to the black. But what Rob doesn't want to do, he doesn't want to play that. Ten seconds. You just see the fine edge of the red just poking out there. He's played that pretty well. He's played that very well. Developed the two reds. And he left Mark long distance. Yeah, it was, a, it was a risky safety, but an aggressive one. So, you know, we see how attacking Rob is when it comes to going game, trying to finish in one visit, but... Ten seconds. He's also a very attacking, aggressive safety player. Oh, what a shot that is from Mark Farnsworth. Time out. Has he landed? Touching ball. Time running. Oh, that's harsh. She's landed touching ball on this yellow. It's a very clever shot from Mark. He's played his yellow, squeezed it in off the other yellow into the middle pocket and developed black, but you look where they landed. It's, it's, it's definitely good news, bad news. Ten seconds. Extension called. Yeah, he's looking for the tall grass. And can't see any. Well... You see a very clever shot here from Mark. He was touching ball on the yellow, which meant that he could play any ball. 
He's chose to play the black. And he's covered the bottom right hand corner pocket and just bought himself a little bit of time. Very clever shot. Ten seconds. Time out. Uh, you can just know in the way that Rob plays, at some point he'd love to have the angle to be able to get down and attack that red and black. He'll have to be very careful, won't he? Yeah, it's hard to see how he's going to be able to do that in a controlled way and or play it in such a way where he's likely to come out nice. He can leave himself half ball on this red in the bottom left-hand corner of the table, but the, the, the cannon is, I don't know, it's just one of those where I think if you play it 10 times, you're, uh, you're probably not likely to come out good more than two or three times out of 10. He's left himself the perfect angle to be able to do that. And I think there is a gap between the yellows. He came over and looked at it. It almost looks like the natural path of that cue ball will go over to towards the red and black. But this is, I mean, talk about high risk. Yeah, and, and that Ten very seconds. clever shot from Mark Farnsworth has, has just forced Rob into doing this. Well, a very courageous shot and very well executed. And as you said, he was forced into it, found the gap between the yellows. Well, can you show us a little bit more magic? Yeah, and the problem was always going to be for Rob is this is probably about as good as he could have wished for after that cannon trust into luck, but he's got a shot. Oh, wow. Just Nerves unbelievable. Yeah, that is brilliant. That puts him through if he makes his black. That puts him through to stage two. Frank. What a finish from Rob Duncan there. Tremendous pool of the very highest level. 2-1 ahead of Mark Farnsworth. Tremendous stuff. And a worthy player to go through. Yeah, he's going to be really pleased with himself sat in his chair, and so he should be. That was unbelievable. I mean, it's a bit similar to what we saw in the very first match. Most players on the tour wouldn't have even thought about going game there, but Rob did live by the sword and die by it. And that has got him through tonight. He has been absolutely brilliant. Frame four. Well, now Mark, Mark Farnsworth, Farnsworth, well, he's got to, he's got to do his bet. Time running. And if I'm all those players that have already forged their way through to the next stage, then seeing these two come hand in hand through, well, you better get that chalk ready and get those tips chalked. There's going to be a lot of tough pool yet to come. I'll tell you now, Jim, there's going to be a lot of players out there that are still left in this tournament that have all of a sudden turned into Rob Donkin fans because they want Mark Farnsworth out of this tournament. They do not want to be stumbling across him where he sneaked his way through, through stage two or got into event three. Ten seconds. They'll be cheering and fist bumping the fact that he's just broken dry. Sounds harsh, but, you know, he's dished out so much punishment on all of us guys in the last few years that you just want to see rid of the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Dry break again from Mark and not the easiest clearance you're ever going to see. And you see there, Rob's just played a little bit of a risky cannon trying to make life easier for himself, but he's in first again. Mark needs two of the last three frames to go through. Yeah, it's funny, Dan, listening to you, and I can certainly relate. I 
I grew up and, and played snooker in the Steve Davis era. And it was like that with, uh, with Steve. I mean, anytime he was looking to go out of a tournament, you kind of went to the edge of your seat because all of a sudden the event opened up. So I can certainly yeah. understand what you're saying about Mark. Yeah. And look, you know, there's most people are, are very, especially your sort of top end of the, the rankings. They're quite positive people, positive players and, you know, if you draw against the Mark Farnsworth or whatever, you still fancy your chances, but we're not stupid. You know, we know he's much more difficult to beat than pretty much everyone else on the tour. So, it's, uh, we're all competitors in our own right. Having said that, the man at the table right now, he's going to take some stopping in this form. He is. Um I think he may well have. He may well be stopping in this frame. No, I don't think that. Does that yellow pass into the left middle? I think it does actually. Just listen. If anything is, if anything goes, and he can see it, I don't discount it at all. You, you shouldn't. Uh, tonight's been proof of that. No, so he's had to go for the double, and he's missed it. Mark Farnsworth fans, you're back in pole position because if his form over the last Christ knows how many years is anything to go by, he'll find a way to clear these up and then he just needs one of the final two frames to see himself Ten through seconds. to stage two. Well, everything's available. Been put under a little bit of pressure in this match, though. Something we haven't seen much of. No, and he normally handles it so well, which is why he's achieved what he's achieved in this game. But this match so far has been a little bit nervy. Uh, it's had a little bit of everything. A couple of misses and flashes of brilliance like we saw from Rob in that last frame to take a 2-1 lead. That's nicely under the red, just above the yellow. The other one does pass in the, into the top right corner past the black. Oh, this is smooth sailing. For Big Ray. Frame. Completes the clearance, and with it, guarantees us six frames between these two champions. Two apiece, Mark Farnsworth, Rob Duncan. So, uh, you have to assume that Mark knows as well that one more frame in his bank account, secures his spot through. Yeah, there's only really pressure on one player now, and that is Mark. Frame five. Rob would love to get Rob through Duncan this group, break. having won all three Scores games. Tied, He's two frames all. Probably had a few of his mates Time back running. in to win all three matches as well, so he'll be doing it for them. But Mark, well, as far as Rob's concerned, his job done for the night. He's through, but... Mark needs just one of these final two frames. I'd be praying for a dry break from Rob. Looks like he's got one. Yeah, prayers answered. We have been at a premium.
Extension call. Looks like he's going to take reds and messy as they look, I think. So he's played the cannon. Now, if the red in the centre of the table goes into the left middle pocket, which he's just coming around to have a look at now, these aren't as tricky as they look. Ten seconds. Very oh, this shot. red goes. He's on it. Yeah, and he'd love to. Now, if he can play almost into the gap of the two yellows just to the right of the red, he's going to push that other red towards the right middle pocket. I think the white's got nowhere else to go but the gap of the two Ten seconds. yellows. If he plays it at the right pace, you should see this other red go right towards that middle pocket. Better than that, it's gone in for him, but is that a good result? So it's going to take one good positional shot from the final red up for the black. Quick look to assure himself that black passes to the bottom left corner. Yeah, he cued that last shot really well as well because leaving himself the perfect angle on this red now was made so much easier by getting close to these two reds. So he can now just... He's probably going to have to just leave himself at distance and guarantee himself a shot. I don't know if he can if he even contemplate and screwing up table and playing this black into the right middle pocket as well. No, he's opted against it. Backed himself from distance. Snooker background. You'd think this was quite easy for somebody like Mark, but there's a lot of pressure on this, Jim. Yeah, the next round is calling pressure. 10 seconds. It's there. And the heavily favored Mark Farnsworth, three, two in front, and with it, books his spot into the next round. And he's gonna be going hand in hand with Rob Duncan as well. Fully deserving the way these two have played. Looks Man, I've got well, a feeling that yeah, both players knew, I think, Dan. I think you were bang on. They knew exactly what they had to do out there. Yeah, they did the maths. You see, Mark looked over and smiled and almost laughed a little bit in relief. But he's through now. He, <laughs> he's got a right spring in his step now. He looks like he can actually enjoy this final frame of the match. But if you'd final have offered frame. both players this Mark Farnsworth the break um, before three frames to two. the start of play today that has Don't snapped your hand off it's all about just getting through to stage two and it's job done yeah Mark Farnsworth whoever wins this group is still to be determined the winner of this frame if Mark beats Rob this frame he'll win the group And that would put him point, in with Jim. Gareth Hibbert and Ben Davies. That's a very good point. <laughs> so I'm not so though. sure I want to. I'm not so sure I want to win the group. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Extension called. I don't know if they've done the maths to that extent, Jim. But if they have, they're not going to be overly disappointed being in the other group. <laughs> I mean, great players as they are. What a group that would be! Mark Farnsworth, Craig Marsh, Gareth Hibbert. No, it's Ben Davies, Gareth Hibbert. Oh, sorry, Ben. Da well, either way, two world champions yeah. plus Mark Farnsworth. Ridiculous standard. Ten seconds. Well, we can sit back. We can do the math. We've got all the paperwork in front of us. They're out there playing the game. Uh, 
Uh, that'll be some group, though. Yeah, if you're a Paul fan, there's no way you're not watching that. And if you're a bookmaker, how on earth do you pick a winner? Well, there was a lot of money bet on this man to win this group tonight. And he isn't there yet. Wow. I think he's got a kick there, hasn't he? He must have done. He's getting the cue ball cleaned. He missed it thick. And he missed it thick by some distance as well. It did look like it really straightened up there. Time running. Well, a chance for Rob Duncan now. Ten seconds. Yeah, if he knocks all these yellows and black in, it would be two wins in a draw. He would win the group. And that means that Mark Farnsworth would go into the group with Craig Marsh and Andrew Hughes and a top qualifier. Yeah, and uh, as good as they are, it'll be the lesser of two evils. See, Rob, there's just played that as kind of like a stun run through. He hasn't quite got into it enough, so he's fell up short. He was trying to play this yellow that he's closest to in the left corner pocket. Well, it's a great recovery. No, he's got the angle on that one yellow to the side pocket if he wants to try and get back to that difficult yellow you just alluded to. Yeah, he's got a decision to make. Does he try and leave that white seven. on the top cushion and play on this yellow into the right middle or the bottom right corner pocket? Or does he try and break it out? which he's trying to do. That's not a great result for him, but it does still go into this bottom right corner pocket. Well, Farnsworth definitely cares. He was out of his chair to have a quick look to see what was available here for Rob. Mark Farnsworth's got a huge following. Owns a snooker club or a pool club. Um, the Sky Lounge up north and uh time foul and have been one free shot one visit time running well i think by my count that's the third time foul he got so wrapped up in the moment putting all his thought into this yellow time out. he forgot the shot clock time running yeah and that is what I call situational suffering. You see, he's just sort of wiped his eye there and all of a sudden he looks far more tired than he looked half an hour ago. It is one in the morning out there. Test of mental strength as well as your playing ability. Just got to hold himself together. Everything's there. These are situations that Mark Farnsworth just doesn't fail to capitalize on. No, this looks like it's all over from here, Jim. And all you guys up in the Northeast... 
I've heavily backed your man. The local legend. To win this group. Looks like you're going to be paid out as a winner. Yeah, it's going to be two wins and a draw for Big Ray. Frame. And, and he will offer the handshake because both players you'll be seeing in the later stages both through some superb pool played tonight. As good as we've seen it. And it only starts to get better. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this as much as we did. Yeah, it was a blinder, weren't it, Jim? That was, how about the, how about the punter at 1,200 pound at five to six? Mark to win it, so he's won a grand, but hasn't he had to sweat for that grand? I bet the old art was going, respiratory machine, and going on. How did he do it? But that was a classic, wasn't it, that last one? Yeah. But how can Rob miss the time, you know? It, it's just careless late at night, and it's just a, 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 a huge error. It really is. And he, he should have at least got a point out of this, at least. Yeah. But, hey, both players are through. But Rob, he don't go into that group of death, as we said, the top one on Tuesday. He goes into Wednesday. That at the moment, looks Currently, a Currently, he goes into that one because he's the, the best runner-up. And it looks a bit easier on Wednesday, doesn't it, than Tuesday. Look at that Tuesday. But, well, we've got three world champions in there, haven't we, Mark? Yeah, we have. But, you know, let's not be a, that's a bit harsh to Drew and uh, Craig Marsh, who's, you know... Well, Craig they, Marsh... They, they played I awesome. think Craig Marsh is going to be a short price favourite at the moment. Yeah. It, yeah, Drew, but he's yeah. got Rob Duncan, he can win as well. You know, it's a classic, that. isn't it? That one, but so Tuesday night is oh, you know, I was gonna go a bingo on Tuesday night. I don't think I'll go now. I think I'll come and come here, watch the pool. You can't miss Tuesday night, can you? And Ross Fernie's in that group as well at the moment. Ross Fernie in it, yeah, as well? he's in the second because he's the second best runner up because he was the first, now he's the second. Unbelievable tonight, weren't it? I've never seen well, you know, your professional pool, but listen. We're going to cut a bit early tonight because you've got to go to bed tonight. Yep. You're playing tomorrow, aren't you? you? You'll be in the first or second game tomorrow. Yeah. And we're proud of you tomorrow. As Dan, Dan Davies said early, what you done? You've commentated this week, presenting. What else? What else you know? uh, making tea. Electrician. <laughs> you've done everything. You've done the carpets as well. Isn't it? Dave said you never made any tea as well. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this. You know, as I said, every night tonight's been fantastic. And also, you know, thanks to the production team and everyone else involved. Thanks to our referee, Ben Taylor Ferranti, our commentary team, Jim White, Stan Davey, absolutely superb tonight. Mark Pickworth is always good, isn't he? And all the boys and girls involved. But you back home, without you, we ain't got a programme. See you tomorrow night. And he's playing tomorrow night. His name is Mark Pickworth. <laughs>